I just try to post a few times a week. I try to take the best quality photos that I can. I did used to use my phone at the beginning and the quality was pretty bad. So <laughs> I do use like a proper camera now uh, that I had beforehand. So mm-hmm. I just started actually using it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Quarantine Edition of the episodes. Uh, I'm your not so humble host, Carp, and joining me this week, I have Riley, also known on Instagram as the Spilly Drinker. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for hopping on today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to speak with us about your uh, it's your craft beer Instagram and your love craft beer. So thank you very much. Uh, as we've been starting with most shows, except for a few occasions, uh, we're going to share a virtual beer. Let my audience know what you're drinking. I am drinking this Ocean View Black Lime Lager from Main Street Brewing from Vancouver. It's a local neighborhood brewery uh, very close to me, and they put out this vacation series, and this was the second one, and they've all been pretty good. Awesome. That sounds absolutely delicious, and I'm a big fan of lagers. I like the twist on that, so if I'm ever out your way, I definitely have to try this. I have from uh, Brasser Villain or Villain uh, brasserie a california style ipa uh with simcoe amarillo cascade and citra hops uh stone fruit well balanced medium bodied and crisp bitterness so Ooh, that sounds can, good a virtual a toast a toast can i get it today ah oh, no <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is crisp not quite in New England, but a very tasty IPA. How's your black lime uh, lager? It's very good. Very refreshing. It's been pretty warm here lately, so these crisp, refreshing beers are pretty nice. Yeah, I'm in Quebec, so we don't get warm for another few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so uh, tell my audience who the Spilly Drinker is. What's, what's your beer story? I guess, yeah, I guess so. I just thought at one point maybe I would make a beer Instagram and uh, just to post different beers because there were so many new breweries popping up around Vancouver. They were just, uh, seemed like they were just popping up new ones every month. So I got really into just visiting breweries, trying different beers, and I thought it'd be fun just to post them on Instagram, share some reviews, and also discover new beers that way, which has been really fun. Very cool. Uh, and you have quite the follower base. So obviously it's a very popular account uh, from what I've seen, which is awesome. Uh, Cause it's always nice to see. And um, I'm a big proponent of, of beers for everybody. And it's always nice to, to speak to women or uh, people of color or, or, you know, uh, people in the LGBTQ community when it comes to beer. So uh, the fact that I'm getting to speak with a, another woman of beer, uh, first ever Vancouver one of beer. I, I thank you very much for that. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, do you remember your discovery of craft beer? So I always preferred beer when I was doing any, since I started drinking pretty much, I would usually get a beer if I went to the bar and uh, there was a brewery called Granville Island Brewing. It still exists. I don't think it's technically craft anymore. I think it's now owned by some bigger entity, but uh, they had a beer called the Lion's Winter Ale. And that was probably the first sort of different beer that I had that wasn't just like a lager or a pilsner or something boring like that. And that's when I discovered that beer can taste different, I guess. <laughs> so from then on, I always went to try uh, anytime I saw something that looked a little bit different, I would always opt for that. And then with all the craft breweries popping up around Vancouver, I just continued on trying different beers. Uh, what made you come up with the Spilly Drinker? Why not, you know, Vancouver Beer Babe or Vancouver Beer Drinker or anything like that? So I'm not very creative when it comes to like coming up with names like that. I'm terrible at it. Uh, when I was one time I was in the car with some friends heading to a lake in the summer and I just mentioned the idea of uh, starting an Instagram page and just tr- tried to brainstorm some names with some friends. And my friend came up with that one because when I'm drinking things, I often spill it. So he came up with a spilly drinker. <laughs> then I checked if it was available on Instagram. It was. And uh, from then on, I claimed that name. I don't think I posted anything for like a year later, but. Oh, sim- available. <laughs> simplicity is the key and and it's it's funny that uh, the, the story about it too you know oh, i kept spilling beers so my friends call me a really drinker and it just it fit so uh i love the imagery you use uh, a lot of nature involved with your image um not a selfies but obviously somebody's taking the photos where where was that inspiration coming from where i'm gonna use nature and i'm gonna have i don't know if it's somebody or if you have a tripod taking automatic pictures but it's very very beautiful so let 
let me, I'd like to know how you get all that done. Uh, so my boyfriend actually takes most of my photos, uh, pretty much all of them now. Uh, mainly the inspiration came from, I just really like nature and being outside and that's just usually where I am. Uh, and also I, the lighting is really not great in my apartment, which is very small. If I were to take pictures in here, they would all look the same. It would be pretty boring. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just like to try and just find a nice place to take the photos or often it's somewhere where I'm actually just sitting and drinking beer. So bring the camera along and that's kind of how the pictures get taken <laughs> yeah. uh, i mean even your apartment the the background you're using to record is very nice as well it's you know with the world map in the background kind of done it's it's very it's very nice and i like that kind of imagery it's it's very you know receptive to the eyes and uh, when it comes to the eyes when i'm i'm reading one of your posts it's very descriptive and, and i almost um i mentioned this on other people i've spoken with it's very like i could see myself tasting that beer in my mind Hmm, thank you. That's yeah. what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, for awesome. Uh, do, you, do you consider yourself like almost like a super taster or have you ever thought about doing like a BJCP or a Cicerone or anything like that? Uh, definitely not a super taster. I am still just trying to work on identifying the different flavors and like which hops are in which beer. I'm starting to get a, a an okay idea of that now i think what i need to do is have like a series of single hop beers and just try them all side by side <laughs> to, to really figure that out um yeah it's really just a hobby casual so i don't know if i'd go too in depth on it um it would be interesting to just maybe have someone like explain how to taste like i've had that with like at a wine tasting where they explained how to properly taste the wine and stuff so something like that with beer just something simple uh yeah definitely not an expert or anything but <laughs> When you're out with a group of friends who's not really a craft drinker, do you know, like, how do you convince them to, like, try craft? Uh, I think that my go-to would probably be to first introduce somebody to, like, a sour, because those, they don't really taste like traditional beer. So for somebody who says that they don't like beer, uh, I think that would be, like, a good intro, just so they could learn that beer doesn't always taste like a lager or something that they may have had in the past that they didn't like. Uh, so I think that would probably be my go-to. Uh, even like a stout, depending, sometimes they can be a bit heavy for some people, but the flavor is just a lot different than what you'd get from like a lager or something like that. You get like chocolate and coffee and stuff. So those are probably styles I would use to introduce somebody to beer that didn't really like it to begin with. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm loving the birth of the pastry stout. Personally, I can see, you know, people who like chocolate cake. It's like, here, try this German co chocolate cake pastry stout. Mm -hmm. Oh, hear this. Or uh, one of the go-tos is like, if you want to drink alkalized chocolate milk, try uh, Flying Monkey's tri uh, Triple Chocolate Manifesto. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you homebrew at all? I don't. I would love to try it someday. But right now, I definitely do not have the space. Uh, maybe if I was in a bigger space one day, I would like to try it or at least like one of those kits that you can get that just comes with everything i don't know how good the beer is but it would just be fun to try it uh when it comes to your instagram i noticed you used to do a lot of stories about uh reviews and vacation trips now we all know vacation most of us have not been on one in the last year so i'm not going to really ask you about that but uh the beer reviews i saw you did them for a solid like 12 15 weeks and then you just kind of stopped could you see yourself going back to doing that Instagram story beer review? Yeah, I'll probably do them again at some point. I think it's just getting around to it. <laughs> uh, and the lighting situation is another thing. Now that the days are getting longer, I guess I could probably do it in my apartment again, like after work is done. Uh, but also sometimes I just find it, I wonder if people actually watch it or they just kind of tap through because usually when you look at the insights for that most people just go forward so yeah but i'll probably do it again at some point just for fun well, I, I <laughs> mean, if, watch the can. yeah like you said if it's too time consuming and, and you you feel like it's not dragging your audience in or it's not getting you new you know followers then kind of why you know mm -hmm. so that that makes total sense to me it's completely understandable uh but when it comes to kind of like doing reviews and stories and, and instagram photos uh, have you worked with a brewery or would you like to collab with a brewery? Could you maybe see yourself making, you know, a lager with at the spilly drinker on the label type of thing? Like, do you see yourself collabing with a brewery or have you already collabed with one? 
I've never done that before, but it's definitely something I would be interested in. Uh, I think that would be kind of fun to be involved in the actual brewing process to some extent. Uh, but I don't know a ton about it. So <laughs> I guess it'd be a good learning experience. It's something I would do if, it, if the opportunity ever came up. But I haven't done it yet. So when it comes to this with your collabs with breweries, uh, I'm visiting the Vancouver area uh, for I've never been. So that would be even better. What are like three to five places you'd suggest that one you'd love to work with, but two, I need to go have some beers at. Uh, definitely for either one of those, uh, super flux is a must try. Their beers are amazing. And I think they're starting to be recognized even across the country. Uh, people know them now and their beers are just a step above. They're so good. Their IPAs are amazing. So super flux number one, for sure. Uh, brass neck brewing is actually the first craft brewery I tried in Vancouver it was one of the first ones that opened so I think it was like the year that they opened I remember going there and like filling a growler and that was my first growler filling experience <laughs> uh, but they just make some really great beer they've always got a ton of good stuff on tap and they've got a pretty small tasting room but their beer is amazing so another one that is a must try and then also 33 acres they now have two breweries side by side. So there's the original 33 acres and they have an experimental one next door. And the original one has kind of the core beers. There's about like five or six of them. And the experimental one will have like a ton of crazy stuff on tap that everything's just amazing. And their tasting room is really nice. Has like a minimalist uh, decor with plants and white walls and stuff. Really nice place and really good beer. So those would be my top three for sure. When it's safe to travel again uh, and whether it be uh, vaccine passports or if you know you're going to a country that's New Zealand or Australia for an example since they are have very low COVID cases uh, a couple of beer cations that you'd love to go on now uh, one where yes I have a life I have to still have a job and earn money but I have some extra money to spend on a beer cation that's one beer cation and the other is I won 50 million dollars on the lot of max I'm quitting my job and I'm traveling for beer uh, for like a month where where's that like Regular beer cation and then the ultimate beer cation. For the regular beer cation, I would probably do Portland. So it's about a four or five hour drive from here. So it's pretty accessible just to go for a weekend trip. And they have so many amazing breweries there. I've had some of like the best beer I've had there. <laughs> and uh, also another thing I really like is the breweries there somehow aren't very busy you never have to wait in line they're always pretty empty inside whereas the ones here are just like completely insane packed lineup especially now it's even worse of course with covid and limited seating uh so portland is just always amazing for beer that would probably be my number or for the regular beer cation and for if money was no object uh i would probably go to europe i would love to try some like actual german beers and uh belgian beers and just try beer from all different countries there. I think that would be really fun. And I was actually supposed to go to Europe last summer, but of course that was canceled. So I would love to make that trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as the show, we were supposed to go to Oktoberfest last year. Um, I don't know how I would have gotten all my video quick because I do have a decent amount of video and recording equipment. So it's like, first of all, finding the German breweries to interview that speak English because <laughs> we're an English <laughs> show, even though I live in Quebec, this is an English show. Uh, and two, like actually going to Europe or even just for Oktoberfest, it would have been like awesome. I've never been. So that would, that would be, it's, it's a dream. It's coming. Excuse me. I'm sure. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully in the next year or so things will get better. <laughs> for sure. Uh, with the growth of your Instagram, did you find it was natural or did you have to kind of like put yourself out there? Like how, how did you grow your numbers? Did you find say it was pretty natural I don't put like a ton of time or effort into it really uh it really is just a hobby like I work full time so my weekdays my week is pretty full already uh so I'd say it was pretty natural I just try to post a few times a week I try to take the best quality photos that I can I did used to use my phone at the beginning and the quality was pretty bad. So I do use like a proper camera now uh, that I had beforehand. So uh -huh. I just started actually using it. Um, yeah, I would say it was pretty natural. I did start to try and use more of like the stories. I'm actually not even that good with Instagram. Like I tried doing the real thing and I couldn't really figure it out. So I'll have to try that again sometime. <laughs> so uh, I started to do a bit more in the stories and stuff and better quality photos. And it was pretty natural. 
didn't really push too much. Uh, that's why I'm simply just the face of the show, uh, the MC host, because uh, all the other stuff I'm not great at. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's because I'm in my early 40s, but all this, uh, as soon as people are like, use TikTok, I'm like, no, use Snapchat. No, I already used Facebook. That's bad enough. Instagram, at least, is not as toxic as Facebook yet. So let's just keep using Instagram. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this this has been great. Uh, thanks for answering all my questions. I have no other questions for you today. Um, all I gotta say is when I am like I already mentioned when I'm out in Vancouver, I look forward to meeting you all for beer when it's safe to when we can actually you know shake hands and uh, enjoy a beer together. Uh, so let my people know where they can find you. I'm on Instagram, the Spilly Drinker, all one word. You can find me there. Anything else? Do you uh, um, you are close to eight thousand followers, or do you have like a giveaway or anything coming up? I've actually never done a giveaway before, but maybe I should. I'm starting to accumulate so much beer that I've been thinking about potentially doing that, but haven't quite done it yet. So we'll think about that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I mean, it's coming. Up, I mean, by the time uh, your episode is out, it's probably close to, if not at eight thousand, I figure so. That's great. Uh, thanks once again for letting me speak with you today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely be grabbing beer in the future. As for us, uh, it's at All Beer Inside everywhere. AllBeerInside.com is the website. Hopefully the merchandise store will be up and running uh, by the time this is out. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap.